to our American flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. To our Christian flag. I pledge allegiance to the Christian flag and to the Savior for whose kingdom it stands, one brotherhood, uniting all mankind in service and in love. If you have a Bible, take that out. I pledge allegiance to the Bible, God's holy word. I will make it a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. And I will hide his words in my heart that I might not sin against God. Amen. Amen. If you have offerings for the missions, today is Mission Sunday. Bring that up now and the sinners can come on over. Set me free, number 235.
take time to give that into the storehouse. Yes. If you have something for God, offer it, donation tithe, take that in your hand. Father, I thank you for the opportunity to be back in your house and come back to your altar to worship you with holy tithes and my gifts and offerings. I declare them blessed with a heart of faith and a heart of honor in the mighty name of Jesus.
Amen. How many is glad to be in the house of the Lord today? Amen. I believe you. Amen. God is good. And all the time. God is good. Amen. All right. So glad to be back in the house of the Lord today. I, I promise if you struggle with just not wanting to be here, the closer you get to God, the easier it is to be here because you want to be here. Amen. Amen. This is this is home, ain't it, Pee Wee? Yes. Amen. This is where I like to be. Amen. All right. So if you've got your Bibles, turn with me to the book of Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4. Uh, we started a, a short series last week on the ministry of helps. Uh, today is part two of that series. How many parts is there? I don't know. We'll know when we get there. Uh, not, not many, okay? Uh, but as, as the dynamics of Lindsay Grove is changing, as we're getting more involved in things, I think it is good to dedicate some time to getting into what helps are. How I can be a help. How I can be a help to the church. Okay, being a help to the church is not necessarily to Lindsey Grove, it is the church. Everything that we do should be to glorify Him, right? And we as a church and we as an individual person is a member of that body. Amen. Everybody found Ephesians chapter 4. Alright, you got your prayer lists? Let us stand. If you need a prayer list, there's some more out there on the bulletin board. All right, Father, we come to you right now, Lord. You know what's written on these prayer lists, Father. So we just ask right now, according to your word, ask and you shall receive. Whatever that need is, whatever that want and that desire is, Father, I'm asking, knowing that you're going to answer that prayer, Father. I'm trusting right now. Trusting that you're going to answer it. Knowing that you're going to answer it. Lord, to those that have lost loved ones and friends and family, we ask you, Father, to lay conviction on them. I ask you, Lord, to draw them close to you. And Lord, I ask you to use one of us as that tool that you use to draw them to you, Father. Use me, Lord. Let that be the prayer of everybody in this church. Lord, use me. Here I am. Use me. Lord, to those that are facing financial situations, Lord, you know what they are. So we ask you, Lord, to work supernaturally in their finances. Provide the money that is needed, Lord. To those that are struggling with sickness or disease or something attacking their body, Lord, you know what those needs are. So we speak healing over them right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, this is the temple of the Holy Ghost. Lord, you call it to be healthy and well, not sick and diseased. So Lord, in the name of Jesus, we speak health and healing over everybody that is here. Everybody that's listed on that prayer list, Lord, that needs health and healing in their body. Lord, I'm trusting you to do just that. Help them, Lord, to realize that you've already given it and help them to receive what you've already provided. And Lord, whatever our personal needs are, you know what they are. I ask you, Lord, to just intervene in our lives. Lord, I ask you to touch me. Help me to be a better leader. Help me to be a better father. Help me to be a better husband. Lord, I ask you to touch my mind and touch my memory. Lord, I ask you to touch my heart that I have more love and compassion. And Lord, we thank you for this church. I ask you to bless Lindsey Grove Church. Lord, 75 new people and that number is going down. It's going down because they're coming in. Lord, this is your church. We dedicate it to you. We give it to you. So Lord, we ask you to make it grow. We ask you to lead every one of us, Father, in the direction that we need to go to be that tool that you use. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, if you've got your, your Bibles open there to Ephesians chapter 4, start at verse 1. It says, I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you that ye walk worthy of the vocation wherewith ye are called. With all lowliness and meekness, with long suffering, forbearing one another in love, 
endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the, uh, in the bond of peace, there is one body yes, and one Spirit, Amen. even as ye are called in one hope of your calling. One Lord, mm-hmm. one faith, one baptism, Amen. one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. But unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. Amen. Amen. Lord, we ask right now that you open up our eyes and our ears and our hearts, Lord, to receive whatever it is that you have for us, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And you may be seated. And today we want to look at something I I called it Christian Teamwork. Okay, this is one of those things that we, if we're going to be on the same team, we got to play in the sandbox together and not throw sand, not be trying to steal each other's toys. We got to play together right in the sandbox, okay, and keep the sandbox clean. So on that note, we're working together. As we're growing to be a more missions-minded church, this is Mission Sunday, right? I got something I want to share with you from one of our missionary friends. All right, now, back into the Scriptures. So we've got Ephesians chapter 4. Today we're going to talk about teamwork, uh, Christian teamwork. We've got to work together, we've got to serve together, we've got to play together, folks. Uh, Psalms 133 and verse 1 says, Behold, that means pay attention. Behold, how good and how pleasant it is for the brethren to dwell together in unity. And this is the part where I always tell this little story about dwelling together in unity. You can't be in the same sandbox. You can't be in the same church where the people on this side of the church is looking over at these people on this side of the church and gritting their teeth and growling at one another. And this is where for those that knew them, Johnny sat in front of Terry and he didn't have a tooth in his head and he wouldn't wear his false teeth. And... (laughs) And Sister Shirley, you know, leader of the pack over here for the the Troublemaker's Corner, they sat across me and they would both instantly, they would look at each other and he would try to bare his his teeth and, and she would make a face at him. You know, it... That's the way it would work. If you've been here to see it, you know how funny it was. But that's the, we've got to work together. It's not a competition. We're in this for the glory of God. Amen. And when you have peace and you have unity with your brethren, your brothers and sisters in Christ, it is pleasant. It is great. It's amazing. That's how things happen in the body of Christ. But when there's discord in the body because you can do something better or you think you can do something better or you want to judge somebody else, there is no teamwork. Amen. There is no glory of God. It's about self. Okay? If you're complaining because somebody ain't doing something good enough for your specifications, you're glorifying yourself saying they're not up to par. If it's pleasing to God, I don't care. Amen. You can get over it. Okay? If it's pleasing God, get over it. Amen. So I, I mentioned this in Sunday school as Mission Sunday. We, we don't want to forget missions, but we need to evaluate our worldview. We're working together. This church is partnering with people all over the world now. We're working together. It's not them versus us. It's not all of these different ministries and all these different people working. We're working together for the same goal and that is to share the gospel and to help people. Okay? You cannot have missions without outreach. You cannot have either one without the gospel. And you can't have any of that working if you don't have workers. You don't have helpers. Right? Right? Remember what we said last week? We, we talked about the ministry of helps and we read where the five-fold ministry says God gave some. So those in the five-fold ministry, your gifts to the church. But when it comes to the ministry of helps, the word says that God set them in the church. 
He didn't set them in Walmart. He didn't set them anywhere else. It says he set them in the church. Why? Because that's where they work. That's where the ministry of help starts is in the church. And then it goes out from these four walls. Okay? So we got to serve together. We got to work together. Uh, and we got to be working toward this worldwide view of what Christianity is. Not what we think it is, but what it really is. We must be in good fellowship with people around the world. Amen? Amen. People depend on it. Uh, the Matikas in Honduras, they do a uh, missions conference type of thing where they bring in missionaries from the area for like a week. And they, this is your rest and relaxation time. We're going to feed you. We're going to give you the word. We're going to let you rest. We're going to pamper you and take care of you for this week. And then you got to go back out there and do the work of a missionary again. You know how they get workers? All of the churches around the world send helps to Honduras to help them in this mission. Uh, we were trying to go and things didn't work out that time. People from Africa, from other states in America, goes to Honduras in the form of helps to help be a blessing to somebody else. Right? Right? Sunday school, Brother Tim said he'd been on probably 12 or 14 mission trips, right? Yes, that's doing the, the work of missions, but it also helps. Okay, let's be real. Churches don't pick out the entire congregation and say, let's all go to the mission field for a month. Some people's not cut out for that. Some people's not called for that. But those that are needs to be sent. Amen. Okay? They have a calling on their life. God set them in the church for a reason and we need to be working together. This is not a look at me type thing. It's not a I'm better than thou. It's not a show off, pop my suspenders type of thing. We're all supposed to do this in meekness and love and kindness and compassion and helping one another. And we've got to listen to the Spirit. Okay? You can't always listen to people. Listen to the Spirit and He will guide you. Okay? That's why we have... So, Brother... Jeremy talked about divine appointments this morning. That's why this church has so many divine appointments, so many divine connections. All around the world, it's because we're praying, we're seeking God, and He is guiding and leading us together. Amen. Okay? And that's also, y'all listen to this one very closely. That is also the same reason that we're praying for His guidance and His leadership that brings us together. That's also the same reason that he separates us from other stuff. Amen. Okay? That's right. I don't know how many churches is in Lawrence County, but we don't have fellowship with every one of them, and there's a reason. Okay? We do have fellowship with some, and there's a reason. We have fellowship with, you know, Born Face in Africa. He live streamed that message. Okay? We have fellowship with a church in Africa that none of us has ever been to. But they've been to Lindsey Grove and uh, on, on the internet. Yeah, some of them watch regular. And, and I've been to their church over the internet, so to speak, and seen some of their services. Huh? It's the way it works. It's teamwork. We're working together for the same thing. Yes. Okay? So we've got to get out of the mentality of what... Uh, what it is all about me and what's all about us and what God wants. That's what's, what it's about, what God wants. So we have to have the mind of Christ and we must walk in faith so that we can accomplish everything that God wants done. We've got to learn to separate what I want is not always what God wants. Amen. And guess what? If we're going to jump on that wagon and do what I want and say it's in the name of Jesus and we're going to claim it and say this is for the glory, if it's still because you want it, it's going to fall apart. Amen. Okay? And when you fall on your face, don't get mad at God and don't get mad at the church. It's your fault. you done it. Deal with it. Okay? Amen. It's His way. It's His will, not ours. I'm a tool. Remember the sandbox. There can be more than one shovel in the sandbox. But don't be shoveling and slinging the sand on the kid next to you. Getting sand in their eyes and hearing them scream and then you get hit with a shovel. Okay? 
we got to do these things decently and in order. Okay? We got to make sure it's pleasing to God. Slinging sand and beating people with a shovel don't work. Okay? So, uh, I want to give you an example here of some churches are praying together for the same need. <clears throat> now, in, in Acts chapter 12, it's, it's, I don't know how, yes, yeah, big enough to see. See, teamwork for God's people, it's a must. It's, it's a got to be thing. We must be on the same page. We must have the same mind. That is the mind of Christ. We must have the heart of Christ. So sometimes you find different churches praying for different things, and uh, sometimes you see them praying against one another. You do. Is that even right? No, it ain't right. You don't pray against another church. You pray that they do what God's called them to do, and you pray that the other church glorifies God. What's wrong with that? Nothing. You pray for them. Okay? But let's deal with this church. Let's deal with the church that God put you in and God put me in. So in Acts chapter 12, uh, verses 1 through 5 says, Now about that time Herod the king stretched forth his hands to vex certain of the church. And he killed James the brother of John with the sword. You think that... Um, that hurt the church, so to speak? Yeah, absolutely. One of their role models has been killed. Yeah, it hurt. Okay, let's get real, folks. We read this and we read how things happen in the Bible, but when it becomes real to us, okay, that's when we start to understand things. We've got to start focusing on these things and stop just reading a story and reading a real life event that happened. This was somebody's brother, somebody's son, somebody's child, somebody's leader. And when he lost his life for the cause of Christ, it hurt some people. Reality is, some people probably started struggling in the faith. Some people probably started doubting, is this really worth it? You know, should I be doing this? Maybe I should just go home and let it be. Okay, don't look at this as just the perfect scenario. People got hurt. Not just physically. People got hurt emotionally. People got hurt spiritually. This is reality. So they killed James, the brother of John, with the sword. And because he saw it please the Jews, he proceeded further to take Peter also. So this is still going on. It's not, it's not a, this happened and they killed him, and then 10 years later they took Peter. So you've had 10 years to start healing from this. No, this is sequential. It's happening back to back. Okay? They killed James, and because it made the, the Jews, and because it made the religious devils happy, they're going to take Peter now. Okay? Now it's a double whammy. They're already hurt. The church family is already hurt. The people that's working and serving Christ and serving with Christ is hurt because James is, or, uh, because they killed James and now they're taking Peter. They're hurting. Two options: you either roll over and give up. You know, in in Job's case, his wife said, "Dustin's terms. Why don't you just roll over and die? Be done with it. Just give up. You know, curse God. Roll over and die." Okay, in this stuff. How many in the church was hurting and wanted to give up? They had the option they could give up and they could just roll over and spiritually die. Or they could push on. They could get their stuff together, get with it, and go on. Do what the church is supposed to do. Do what the Christians are supposed to do. And because he saw it please the Jews, he proceeded further to take Peter also. Then were the days of unleavened bread. Verse 4, And when he had apprehended him, when they had took Peter, and put him in prison, and delivered him to four quaternions, quatern uh, somebody help me, quaternions of soldiers to keep him, intending after Easter to bring him forth to the people, Peter therefore was kept in prison. So now they've killed James, now they've imprisoned Peter. Okay, you don't have all the details, but basically what's happened, they put him in jail to keep him safe because they're, they're plotting to kill him. 
Okay? So he's killed James, and now the, the church is hurting. Now the church is looking, saying they're fixing to kill Peter too. They done got him in jail. They're fixing to kill him too. They're taking out the leaders of the church. But then that last part there, verse 5, Peter therefore was kept in prison, but prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. Okay? Let's think about this. Think of this as, as a church. Peter and his church operated as teamwork. Peter was the leader in the church. Let's, let's just say Peter was pastor in the church. Okay? Let's, let's build this scenario around Lindsey Grove. He was the pastor. And he was in trouble. He could be facing death. If God didn't work, if a miracle didn't happen, Peter was probably dead just like James. The church is hurting. The church is struggling. There's a lot of opportunities. At that time, when they're struggling, there's an opportunity for the devil to get into the church and start trying to raise up self-appointed devil or self-appointed bosses. Same thing. Self-appointed devils is going to take over and say, well, I'm the most qualified one. No, you ain't. The most qualified one is the one that God says is qualified. And in the eyes of people, that may be the most least qualified one in people's eyes, but God raises them up. Okay? What God does, people better keep their hands off of it. Okay? Lay not thine hand upon mine anointed. When God anoints somebody, when God calls somebody, you keep your dirty hands off of them and let God do the work. So there's opportunity for sin and, and the enemy to get into the church at that point because the leader's gone. Those that are dedicated to following this leader and supporting this leader and, and supporting Peter, they're hurting. Some of them is like, we got this. God, you can do this. Lord, I'm going to pray. Some of them's probably struggling. Like, oh, reality. Oh, Lord, what are we going to do? Gloomed, cue up the hee-haw. I'm going to put that on here one day. <laughs> and I'm going to have it on hand. So when I say cue it up, hope can just... Gloom, despair, and agony on me. Go jump in the pig pen and waller around in the self-pity, the mud of self-pity, you know. Gloom, despair, and agony on me. My world is falling apart. My leader is gone. Now I can't function. But the Word says the church did what they knew to do. They came together and they prayed for about five minutes and they all went home to eat dinner. I thought that was the religious way to do it. No. The Christian way to do it is to do what just what just what the word says, and that's pray without ceasing. That's right. Okay? Yeah. Pray without ceasing. They dedicated themselves to a time in prayer together. Yes. Corporate prayer. That's why when we have prayer time at the end of service if somebody needs prayed for, we lay hands on them and we come together. It's corporate. Yes. We make a point of contact. It's corporate prayer. I believe that's what they did. They came together as a church and they prayed without ceasing. They prayed for their pastor. They prayed even though that uh, even though the pastor was not there in person or the leader was not there in person to say, okay, I need you to do this and you to do this and you to do this because they were in the ministry of helps in that, that aspect. They knew what was expected. They knew what to do. Okay, they already had their assignments. Churches, you don't have to have me to stand before you and say, "Okay, now let's pray." Okay, you got you got the Spirit dwelling inside of you. That's right, that's right. When you feel Him tugging, you feel that that pull of the Spirit. If it's saying pray, you stop where you're at and you pray. Yes, don't wait for the pastor to say, "Oh no, it's not prayer time." You wait. Okay, you can get up here in the altar and pray while I'm preaching. I ain't going to stop you. Amen. I expect somebody to come pray with you. I may not stop preaching, but I don't expect you to not listen to what God says either. Amen. We've got to do the, the will of the Father. Jesus did it even though His body did not want to do it. That's why He prayed, Lord, if it be Thy will, let this cup pass from me. I don't want to do this. I don't want to feel this pain. I don't want to suffer. But nevertheless, Father, nevertheless, God, 
regardless of what I'm feeling and what I'm thinking, regardless of what this flesh is dealing with, regardless of that, thy will be done. God's will be done. Why? Because at that point, yes, Jesus was God in the flesh, but Jesus was also a tool, just like we are, being used of God the Father. He was that perfect example. So if Jesus can come to this earth and be a tool used of God, so can we. Right? So can we. We're made in His image. He was our example. He said, greater works than these shall ye do because I go to the Father. He's the one that said it. Not me. And His instructions didn't fade away after the twelve. It continued on. Right? It, it continued on. Now I'm looking for something. Hang on. Alright, well it didn't pop in my head fresh, so we're going to move on. But he did. That was the purpose. Jesus was an example. He was a tool. If he can do it, we can do it. Amen. Right? Amen. If he denied the flesh to go pray, we can deny the flesh and go pray. Amen. This world is in a mess right now. It needs Jesus all around the world. Not just in Lawrence County, not just in Revelo, not just in America. Jesus is needed around the world. So what are we doing about it? We, we better be praying. Amen. But our focus has got to stop being inside these four walls. Amen. It's not anymore. What does it say? No, but I like it anyway. That wasn't what I was looking for, but we're going to take it. Just as the Lord appointed 70 more to go out and share the gospel. And whenever they came back, they were excited. This was Jesus. Yes, Jesus was still there. But they came back and they said, even the devils are subject unto us. Jesus did not go with the 70. He was in one human fleshly form. But 70 went out and 70 came back in amazed because the devils had to yield to them. Why? Because they were teaching in the name of Jesus. Because they were sharing the gospel. Because they knew who they were in Christ. They were not just the twelve. They were seventy. Okay? So that, that teaching of once it, the twelve are gone, it died out, that's ignorance. Amen. Philippians chapter 1 verse 27. says, Only let your conversation be as it becometh the gospel of Christ, that whether I come and see you, or else be absent. I may hear of your affairs that you stand fast in one spirit, with one mind, striving together for the faith of the gospel. So that goes back to what we were saying. Even if I'm not here, if the pastor's not here, one mind, one accord, the mind of Christ, we know what to be doing. Okay? You don't have to have somebody stand and hold your hand. We're adults. We're Christian adults. We should be mature Christians to know how to operate in the Spirit. Amen. Okay, if you don't know how to operate in the Spirit, keep hanging around because we're fixing to start studying that tonight. The Holy Ghost Bible study starts tonight, yes. folks. Okay? Uh, but the church, okay, they prayed without ceasing. They already knew what to do. They did it together. And here's the thing that I pulled out of this that I love. They were relentless. They prayed without ceasing. They were relentless. They didn't back off. They didn't give the devil a, a time for, to get a second breath. They were relentless. Where's the relentless Christians today? Amen. Where's the ones that's going to serve God regardless? That same example that I use of the Christians that were beheaded on live television overseas by, the, by ISIS. And they started singing Amazing Grace as they were cutting their heads off. That was relentless. 
the Christians were relentless. In the face of death and martyrdom, they did not back down and say, I'll be quiet, just don't hurt me. They started saying an amazing grace. Yes. Huh? They're relentless. You know. Yep, gonna say it anyway. <laughs> if y'all ain't big boy enough for this, then you'll learn. The churches, and I'm gonna say churches all around the world, church pews have been padded to the point that the people sitting on it, there's too many coward Christians sitting on church pews. All right, now. Too many coward Christians. I'm only going to dedicate my life to Christ when it's convenient for me. I'm not going to sacrifice Jack so that I can help the church, serve the church, serve God, be a blessing to somebody else unless it's convenient. I'm not sacrificing nothing. I've got my own life. I've got my own job. I've got my own family. I've got my own stuff. You get that attitude and you watch God start taking it away. And when God starts taking it away, what's the first thing they do? They run to the church and say, somebody pray for me. In my little imagination, that's when somebody needs to be like, Poof. hey dummy, you did it to yourself. I don't do that. That's just my imagination, okay? <laughs> Sometimes I might daydream of helping somebody. Uh, but it's reality. They bring this on themselves and by, by denying what they're supposed to be doing for God. And then the first thing that, that happens is they run to God whenever their life starts falling apart. Where were you when somebody else's life was falling apart? Why was you not sacrificing some of your time to pray for somebody else when theirs was falling apart? Why are you not being a relentless Christian and being relentless in what the Word says to do rather than when it's convenient? Okay? Too many cowards sitting on church pews. And the devil loves it, folks. He loves it. He wants you to be scared. That, that mentality, oh, I don't want people to see me act like that. I, look, I've heard it. Those people that comes to visit here asking about that guy that come out of the sound booth making all that noise and why does he do that for? Like, you know, they're ashamed to act that way. Well, if you're ashamed to act that way, then what are you doing here? You know? If you're going to let God take over, if you're going to serve Him relentless, if you don't care what people think, they don't, you don't care what they think of you, what they think you look like, as long as you're serving God, you're pleasing God, you're worshiping God, I, we're not going to be that church where you worship God like this. Okay? I, I don't care if we string up pulleys on the ceiling and tie your wrist to it and make you raise your hands. I don't care. Some people need to learn it's okay to raise your hands. Yes. Some people need to learn it's okay to stand up in the middle of service. It's okay to stand up whenever people sitting down singing. Some people's got to learn some freedom in Christ. Yes. Stop being the coward that wants to sit on church pews all over this world and say somebody else can do it. Amen. We read about these missionaries who puts their life on the line. Some of them die. Because people sitting on church pews is like, let them do it. I don't want to die today. They're a help. And if you're not going to help, somebody else is going to. If they're not going to help, these over here will. Okay? God's going to raise up a church and He's going to raise up a people that will do what He wants. That will serve Him and serve with Him. Okay? We are fellow laborers together. We are joint heirs with Christ. That means we work with Him, not just for Him. Okay? 2 Corinthians verse, or chapter 6, verse 1. We then, as workers together with Him, beseech you also that you receive not the grace of God in vain. We're not by ourselves and we're not on our own, folks. We've got God in our corner. Okay, let, let's go to the movies for a minute. You, whatever movies you like, I'm always been a big fan of the Rocky Balboa movies. Come on. If you was going to get into the boxing ring on TV, 
uh, you would feel 10 foot tall and bulletproof if you had Rocky in your corner, right? Right? If you're a martial arts guy, you would feel unbeatable if you had Bruce Lee in your corner. If you was a military guy, you would feel unstoppable if you had General Patton in your corner. You know, fill in the blank. But we're Christians. We ain't none of that earthly, fleshly stuff. We're Christians, and we got Jesus. We got the Holy Ghost in our corner. And not just in our corner, He's dwelling inside of us because we're the temple of the Holy Ghost. So we got no reason to be scared or timid of anything. The devil has reason to be scared of us. But he lies and deceives, and Christians listen to that garbage, and they stay back in the corner. God's in the corner with Jesus pushing, and we're pushing backwards. Get out of our comfort zone. Get out there and let God use us. He's got our back. Okay, We're not by ourselves. He bought you. He paid for you in the blood of Jesus. He bought you for a reason. That's not to stay hid in the corner. That's to be a warrior for Christ. That is to be a prayer warrior, a spiritual warrior. Whatever He's called you to be, He wants you to be that with all you've got. Okay? And if He's called you into the ministry of helps to do different things, then He expects you to do that with all you've got. Not bragging on myself. Don't take this wrong. But He expects the same thing from the pastors. Do it with all you've got. Last night was a struggle night studying. I went to bed at 2 o'clock this morning because my job was in here. My need was in here. So that need took until 2 o'clock this morning to finish. So that's where I was at. Because that's what God expects me to do. Okay? That is an expectation of God. That's part of the calling. Sometimes you do what's necessary even if you have to drink coffee and make yourself stay awake to do it. Okay? You do what is necessary. We're working together with Jesus, with the Holy Ghost. So I want you to remember that God, as, as, a, as a helper, God set you in the church. Amen. Okay, He didn't set you somewhere else. He set you in the church. And if you're here today, He set you in Lindsay Grove. Yes, okay, Brother Ted used to have this saying, you, know, you can go visit somewhere, but don't forget where you come from. Okay, We may go visit other churches, but don't forget where Lindsay Grove is at. Lindsay Grove is where God put you. Okay, You know why so many people are what we call church hoppers? They bounce from this church to that church to that church because God called them to put them in one and they didn't go. They went somewhere they wanted to. Amen. Amen. The reason they keep hopping churches is because they can't find one to satisfy them because the ones they're going to is not where God put them. Amen. Maybe it's not the name brand that you wanted, but God sent you there anyway. Then go there. Maybe it's not big enough. You want a big church, but God sent you to a little one. Too bad, go to the little one and God will work. Go to the big one and you're out of place. Okay? Stick out like a sore thumb. You'll always be the awkward one in the congregation. Like, why do I feel so weird? Because you're not supposed to be there. God put you somewhere else. But you couldn't get yourself out of the way long enough to get where God sent you. God set you in a church. The ministry of helps, God sets you there. Uh, not an accident either, okay? He meant for you to be here today as well. So there is a helps ministry for you. I think I made a list of something on it. I don't remember. There's a, there's a helps ministry here for you. You can help with your spiritual gifts. If you're a Christian, you've got some spiritual gifts, okay? You can help by using those. You can help with your call in God. God's called you to do things He didn't call me to do. God's called somebody else to do things He didn't call you to do. That's why we work together as a Christian team. It's a framework of what God has put together. Amen? Amen. You can help with your natural talents. Right? We just built that ramp for them. Right? There was people with skills in carpentry that did those things. There was people that had some talents to do some things. Whatever you do... Whatever you enjoy, God has a place for you to do it. Yes. Amen? And you can help with your willingness to serve with or without 
getting something back from man. But if you're doing it with the expectation, I want to get, uh, get a payback for this, that's not the ministry of helps. That's paid labor. Okay? There's a difference. Helps is helps. Labor is labor. Amen. There's a place for both of them. Okay? We're paying... Years ago, this roof was put up here by the people of the church. That workforce is not here today. Okay? Um, yeah, I've got experience, but I'm, have you seen how tall that roof is back there? No. Forget it. I ain't getting on it. Uh, there's others in here that has uh, some talent and skill in doing that, but you know what? We're going to pay the Amish to get it done. And, and they'll be done quick. Okay? They do it all the time. That's labor. We pay them for that. But when it comes to the helps, okay, when it comes to doing what we did back here a few weekends ago with the missions, everybody that took part in that, okay, we didn't have to start writing checks to all the people that helped volunteer their time to do that. But look what it did for the gospel. Amen. Okay, it raised money that we can share Jesus around the world. I don't know what the missions offering is today, but I might have cheated and looked in there. I'm going to make this. Without counting it, we're going to hit $9,000 today after that right there is added to the bank account. Yeah. We're going to do it. 9000 When you can dig a well and get the word of, of the gospel in a person's hand in a Muslim nation for six and seven hundred dollars we'll do it all day long all day long if you can feed a kid for ten or fifteen dollars for a month and get them into an orphanage where they're taught in school the things of the gospel they're taught to read using the gospel what better thing to teach somebody to read than reading the Bible $10, $15 a month, we'll do it all day long. Okay? It's perspective, folks. It's not about having a million dollar building and the fanciest lights and the fanciest equipment. It's about the gospel. Amen. And we're going to work together worldwide to make sure that it happens. But we're also going to work together in here. We're fixing a fixing to queue up some things and some of you is going to have an opportunity to be a help. Yeah. Amen? Thank you, Jesus. We're, God give you some talents, we're going to use them. You're not going to sit on them all day long. You're going to start using them. So walk worthy, as Scripture said, walk worthy of the vocation wherein you are called. Amen? Walk worthy of it. Walk worthy of it. God give you natural abilities. Don't be ashamed of those. Walk worthy of it. God give you skills. Walk worthy of it. Okay? God blessed you and anointed you for certain things. Walk worthy of it. Okay? It is a gift of God. So there's a work for you to do in your local body. And that work you do in the local body, just like our missions fundraiser, can have an impact on the whole world. Because you're something special. In Christ, in Christ we are the righteousness of God. We are the righteousness of God. But it's not about us. It's about Him. And when it comes to Him, we're just a tool. We're just a tool. But I want to be the best tool that I can be. Okay, I've got multiple tools and some of them never get used because maybe they don't work right, they're damaged. Guys, you've probably got one of those ratchets in your tool bag that it gets jammed up and it won't work half the time and you bang it on the wall or something, the floor, until it works. I don't want to be that one. I want to be the nice one that you reach in there and you look for that tool because you know it works right. And it does what it's supposed to do. I want to be the one that God reaches in the tool bag at Lindsey Grove and says, oh, there's that one. I know He'll do what I called Him to do. And I want you all to be the same way. When he reaches in the tool bag for Leoma, Lawrence County, I want him to say, oh, that one goes to Lindsey Grove. I know what they'll do, what I tell them to do. I know this one will do it. I know that one will do it. That's what I want for all of us. Amen. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Don't be the, tool, the dull tool. Be the sharp tool in the tool shed. Be the one that everybody wants. Yes. 
be the one that I have to guard at my house so nobody has to borrow it. You know, this is the nicest one. I don't want nobody borrowing it. I'm going to take care of it. But you need to be that tool. I need to be that tool that everybody wants. Why, why, why does everybody want it? Because it's good, it's durable, you can count on it to do what it's supposed to do. It's reliable. People want to use the best because it's the best. We want God to look at us and hear us say, yes, use me, Lord, here I am. And He says, yeah, I can, use, I can count on you. Let us stand. Anybody want to be prayed for? Anybody else want to be prayed for? I'm going to stand in for him. He's going to be healed. He is healed right now in Jesus' name. Anybody else? Okay. Amen. Anybody else? Let me ask you this question. If God lays something on your heart, if He's called you to do something, how many is going to dedicate their life to doing it? Amen. Even if it means you've got to give something up. Are you willing to? I don't mean just sad. I mean, are you really willing to give up something that you enjoy so that you can be a better fit for the kingdom? Are you? Amen. We don't want any Ananias and and, and yes. Ananias and Sapphira. No. Okay. It's got to be legit. Y'all come on up. Let's make a point of contact. Lay hands on one another. God knows the needs. Would you go to Sister Martha, please? Amen.
Lord, you know what she's seeking for. Lord, you know what she's looking for right now. Lord, I'm asking for divine revelation right now. I ask you, Lord, to speak to her heart and to her mind. Lord. Open up the eyes, Lord, that she sees what she's seeking for. Lord, whatever it may be. And Lord, I'm asking you to prepare her steps and prepare her way. Lord, you know what's coming in the future. Lord, I'm asking that you do it right now in Jesus' name. Lord, that these divine appointments that you make for her, Father, the, the, the clearing of the way is taking place. I thank you for it. Or whatever it may be, you know what it is. Lord, that's what fell into my spirit, the clearing of the way. Lord, whatever is hindering, whatever is cluttering, whatever is standing in the way, Father, I ask that you remove it right now supernaturally in the name of Jesus. Lord, those gates are coming down. Yes. We're going to stomp. Yes. We're going to bust those yes. gates down. Thank we're going to bust them open, tear them down, and walk yes. over them in the yes. name of Jesus. So in Jesus' name, those gates yes. are gone right now. Yes. The gates have been blocking and preventing. They're destroyed right now. Yes. Yes. And Father, we pray for strength and might right now for Sister Sharon. Yes. Lord, work in her supernaturally every day. Lord, we ask you to anoint her hands, Lord. Yes. That everything she laid her hand to, Lord, be anointed and be blessed. And we thank you, Father. We thank you, Father. And Lord, I pray that hedge of protection around her because I know as soon as we're done, the devil's going to try to speak defeat to her. But he can't do it because she's yours. Lord, you've got her back. And I'm asking right now that you wrap your arms around her and you dispatch your angels, Lord, to protect her and prevent the enemy from attacking her. Lord, we thank you. Thank we you. thank you, Lord. And we claim it right now in Jesus' name. Yes. And we plead the blood of Jesus over her right yes. now. Yes. In Jesus' mighty name. Thank you. Thank you. And Lord, as we pray for Isaiah, Lord, you know what the devil's trying to do. The devil's trying to destroy the youth of this nation. The devil's trying to destroy the youth of this world. But Lord, this one's yours. Yes. Yes. This one's yours. We yes. claim it for you, Father. Bring him strength that he's never experienced before. And Lord, make him a force to be reckoned with. And whenever the devil comes after the youth and comes after the team, that he fears Isaiah. Because this is yours. And we're going to stand with him, Father. We're going to support him. We're going to help him, Father. Isaiah belongs to you in Jesus' name. And he lifts him up above everything. Set him up on high. Lord, that he can look around and see all the attacks of the enemy. He knows what he needs to do. He knows where to stand in the He knows how to raise his hand. Help him, Father, to know how to support the other youth and strengthen the other youth and to be the man that you called him and created him to be. And we thank you, Jesus. We plead the blood of Jesus upon you.
pray for this congregation. Lord, you know our needs and our desires and our hearts. Lord. You know everything about us. Lord, I ask you to just help every one of us. Help every one of us. Prepare ourselves. Prepare our goings before us. And Lord, open up our eyes. Just as you did for the servant, Father, I'm asking that for those in this church, you open up our, our spiritual eyes that we can see the army of God all around us working for us and working with us Lord. supporting us because yes. you love us because you died for us yes. supporting us open up our eyes that we can see into that spiritual realm yes. and know exactly what we're up against yes. and then empower us Lord, to just walk over the top of the devil yes.